Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Ivanka just did what nobody expected inside the Oval Office leaving Congress stupefied. President Trump had a very important meeting with some members of Congress, in the Oval Office on Wednesday. We all know, Trump is very close with his family, especially his children. And most especially, his daughter, Ivanka. So it should not have come as a surprise to anyone, when she entered the Oval Office on Wednesday, during the meeting between her father and those congressional leaders. They were meeting to discuss a plan to increase the debt ceiling, prevent the government shutdown and pass a spending package offering aid to victims of Tropical Storm Harvey. This is very important stuff, for sure. Ivanka came in near the end of the meeting and, reportedly, some members of Congress became quite annoyed. This is, according to some reporters who learned the information from an aide who allegedly had knowledge of the meeting. Sounds like a reputable source of information, right? Hearsay upon hearsay, they call that in the legal world. And all anonymous to boot. Here's what one person tweeted about the incident. If these congressional leaders were, in fact, actually annoyed, they can just get over it. Ivanka, in addition to being Trump's daughter, is on his staff and a very intelligent, capable, articulate woman. It's clear Trump values her and her opinions greatly. If he wants her in his office, then she belongs there. If you agree, please comment we love you Ivanka and share so much she sees it. H. T. The Hill She's in for IT what one of her former IT workers is about to do has W. Wasserman Schultz freaking out. Hina Elvey, the wife of former House Democrat IT staffer Imran Awen, has agreed to come back to the U.S. and face bank fraud and conspiracy charges after leaving to Pakistan earlier this year. Awen was arrested in July as he attempted to board an airplane to Pakistan to join his wife and children. Last month the husband and wife were indicted on four charges by a grand jury in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. These charges mostly stem from allegations of bank fraud the couple allegedly gave false information to obtain a large line of credit from a bank, which they sent to Pakistan. Apart from the bank fraud charges, A1, Alvi, and other IT aides have been under investigation for allegedly stealing equipment from House Democrats improperly accessing computer systems, and double billing. Most of the House Democrats fired a win when the investigation came to light in February, except for Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who kept him on the payroll until his July arrest. Alvi may return to the U.S. as early as October 6, the same day a win is set to appear in court for a status hearing. Court documents outline the parameters of her return. Council represented that defendant LV will turn in her passports when she returns to the United States, and that she will not seek to book any international travel following her appearance in the United States. A1, for his part, has pled not guilty to the charges against him. Well folks, the mystery here is definitely heating up. I'm surprised LV is coming back from Pakistan. But it's great news and we might finally start to get some answers over the Democrats and especially Debbie Wasserman Schultz's sketchy dealings stay tuned and share this out. HT Fox News While speaking in North Dakota, Trump turned and did something that has Democrats crying. President Donald Trump held a rally in North Dakota on Wednesday in support of tax reform. The liberal Senator Heidi Heitkamp flew with Trump to the event in North Dakota. Remember, Trump won North Dakota in November with 36 points. After today's tax reform rally, Trump called up the North Dakota lawmakers on stage to support his tax reform. President Trump also vowed to cut taxes for the working class in America. Share this if you are proud of our president. He is working his butt off and is working to make this country better again.
the Republicans aren't doing anything and the Democrats are obstructing everything. Do you want Trump to lower taxes? Sound off below. We need to reduce the tax burden on our American workers. It's time and Trump is going to lead the way. Trump just held meeting with Pelosi and Schumer and suddenly did unthinkable with them. President Trump just went around the Republicans to strike a deal with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. The president agreed to move the debt limit to December. Trump met with congressional leaders on Wednesday at the White House. President Trump shocked the nation with the announcement and has really turned the Republican establishment on its head. They have not been able to pass legislation that can help working Americans. According to Politico, President Donald Trump unagreed with Democrats to raise the debt limit and to fund the government for three months. Trump also agreed with Democrats that Republicans should pass a Hurricane Harvey relief package along with a three-month debt increase. Share this if you are proud of Trump for working hard despite the failure of the Republicans to get anything done. Thank God that we have a president that cares about the people and not Hillary Clinton right now. Seconds after The View host Joy Behar attacked Sarah Sanders, Sarah hit back hard. If you've ever viewed The View, you know that Joy Behar vehemently hates our president. She leaves no doubt about her feelings, each day insulting him and his supporters as much as she can. She says he's nuts, needs to be taken out of office, needs to be impeached. Just on and on she goes. Well, on Wednesday, Sarah Sanders went on that show and Beher told her I feel sorry for you that you have to go out and defend those lies every day. She was talking about a PolitiFact report that Beher actually got wrong. Beher claimed that Trump lies 95% of the time. Here is a link to what Beher was referring to and I invite you to check it out yourself, while duly noting that it's from the Washington Post and giving it its due worth. The point, Beher was calling Trump a liar, while distorting the truth herself. To which Sarah Sanders retorted, the problem with that, Joy, is that you are doing exactly what we are talking about and pushing a false narrative. Beher learning nothing, came back saying I feel for you, and repeating her false narrative. If you are sick and tired of these bitter haters skewing the truth, please get this shared all over the place, and common way to go Sarah. H. T. The Daily Caller Karma Alert Moments after announcing book tour, Hillary got slammed with the worst possible news. Hillary Clinton has done everything she possibly can to stay relevant, but it looks like even some of her closest allies clearly want the opposite. With Hillary's upcoming book tour looming over the heads of Dems nationwide, the general consensus remains that more publicity for Clinton is simply bad for the Democratic Party. This obviously came as an unbelievable shock to Hillary. But most people involved are tired of rehashing her loss in November. Clinton has proven that she may never let it go, and this is a sore topic for Dems who are looking to gain seats nationally in 2018 and 2020. Maybe at the worst possible time, as we are fighting some of the most high stakes policy and institutional battles we may ever see, at a time when we're trying to bring the party together so we can all move the party forward stronger, stronger together. Democratic Representative Jared Huffman of California told Politico. She's got every right to tell her story. Who am I to say she shouldn't, or how she should tell it? But it is difficult for some of us, even myself who've supported her, to play out all these media cycles about the blame game, and the excuses, he concluded. Unsurprisingly, other Democrats quickly joined in. There is a collective groan whenever there's another news cycle about this said one source close to Clinton. I think she should just zip it, but she's not going to. According to Politico, one former Clinton campaign staffer was asked to comment on the never-ending media frenzy involving the former candidate. The Final Torture 
it's hard to argue that more biased media coverage of Hillary's complaints and excuses will indeed be torture. She hasn't changed her tune in nearly a year, and her new book will undoubtedly follow suit. The good news is her party support will be less than ever and hopefully that leads to a decrease in media coverage. It is simply time to move on. If your supporters are telling you to stop, it is definitely time. Let President Trump do what he was elected to do and maybe find a way to contribute? Sounds like a much better plan than dragging our administration through the mud in a time of national readiness. What would you do if you were Hillary? Let us know and share this before the media buries it. Sources, DailyCaller.com